Welcome to the Amphibian Press Podcast. I'm V.S. Holmes, and with me today is K.C. Freeman, the author of Rekindled Prophecy, which is book one in the Grayland, the Guardian Angel series. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. It's always fun to put like the uh, the voice to the author name that you keep seeing online. So now the book just came out today. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about uh, this this book for those of us who haven't read it yet. Rekindled Prophecy is actually uh, the first in a series that's it was originally going to be three books, and then it was going to be four, and then it was back to three, and now I think I'm <laughs> going to five. So uh, authors were a fickle bunch. We'll like, change our mind in a second. <laughs> That's how all my series begin, too. It's like, oh, here's, here's this one-off story, and then like six books later. Yeah, it just kind of keeps going. Uh, but it's about a guardian angel. Uh, her name is Graylin. Um, I've really had the story in my head since like I was a teenager, but then... Like you go to college, life gets in the way, creativity gets smushed down. Mm-hmm. And uh, like a few decades later, <laughs> right. um, the story like popped back up in my head and I was like, well, why don't I just write it? Um, but Graylin is a guardian angel. She's 450 years old. Oh, but she, she looks fantastic. <laughs> um, she doesn't remember anything about her human life because in... In this story, guardian angels were once human, and they actually retain most of their humanity. They have the same weaknesses, you know, desires. Um, they can get hurt, but they heal pretty fast, much, mm-hmm. much faster than a human would. Um, they just have a lot of great intuition and great fighting skills, and they're just called to where they're needed. And sometimes Grayland's just you know, trying to help somebody talk them down off of the bridge that they're looking to jump off of. Mm-hmm. Or she's um, also actually fights, you know, the real demons that are out there. You know, the book starts out actually where she's uh, trying to save this guy from a soul stealing demon who was acting as a car shark. Mm, nice. <laughs> so so she, she does both and she sort of travels, rambles around. Uh, it's called where she needs to go. Um, doesn't have a set place to live again. She doesn't remember her human life. Mm-hmm. So, but she also, she has a couple of really good friends, but otherwise she tries to keep herself detached because, you know, after 450 years, you know, you start losing people that you would love and right. you know, just by old age. So she doesn't want to get too close, but she always, she has a tendency to get too close sometimes. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the first book, like I said, is, is out today. And um, when do you think that the, the rest of this series will, will come rolling down the line? Um, I talked to the publisher the other day. It's uh, book two is with the editor right now. Yeah. And they are getting back to me. Their estimated time is next week. Uh, so hopefully we can speed it along. But it's probably going to, the initial estimate was the end of the year or maybe the first, very, very first of next year, which I'm hoping we can speed it up a little bit just because I I want to get more out yeah um, but it actually may buy me the time that I need because I just took what was a complete book three where it was going to end and decided to like take it back out <laughs> to now five books so I've got a, a lot of rearranging to do with book three right now that's always fun to like I mean it's it, it's nerve-wracking but it's also really fun to go back in and like tease your plot apart and um, I, I always enjoy adding like because I mean, I'm, I'm a super like slow and wordy writer, but I always like adding all those little like scenes that you get to add when suddenly you have the room to do so. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Cause before, like, I think I just got in my head, like, okay, it has to be three. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to shove everything into three. And yeah. I realized I, I packed too much into three, but not enough like I didn't do it a, uh, I did it a huge disservice actually, mm-hmm. like for book three. So it really needs to be expanded more. And uh, the two main characters are actually going to go on a little bit of a journey separate from each other after sort of coming back together. Mm-hmm. Book one is is setting the story up. Mm-hmm. It comes off a little bit, even I'll say it's a little slower yeah. than the others, but it's because I'm trying to like build it up. This is what we're going towards. And this is why it's, like you'll see a lot more in book two and especially in book three, like it'll be like a lot of like, like the face palm to the head, like, Oh, okay. <laughs> now I get it. 
that I love going back and like, okay, I'm going to put a little nugget back in this book. Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) All all the little Easter eggs for the people who who go start to finish. Right. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of little Easter eggs that you really just, you won't get it until you get to the part where it's like, oh, okay. Now it it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I have a friend, um, she and I write in the same universe for my sci-fi series and her urban fantasy series. And um, it's so much fun because like, like, we'll do that with each other's books and each other's characters. And like, because we do have a, a pretty heavy crossover as far as audiences go. And um, that way it's like, for, for those of you who like want to collect them all, here are all the different like little Easter eggs, see if you can find them. So. Yeah, I actually did a couple of those uh, with this series, there's an mm-hmm. author friend of mine that uh, actually I don't think I put him in until book three. He may have, I think he may have been actually in book one a little bit too, but mm-hmm. and she has this cat in her books and she has a series, it's the Spirit Key series. And um, I put the cat in, but like the cat, you know, in her books is modern day and in mine you know this is from 450 years ago so the yeah. cat's been around a long time <laughs> <laughs> it's like um in tamora pierce's books um there's a you know a cat in one series and then the later series after the cat has you know at least passed from the mortal realm um you see the constellation of the cat in the later books and it's a, a reference to that so i I just love that kind of stuff. All, all the little details that we get to see both as writers and, and as readers. Yeah, I will say I'm actually talking to another author friend of mine because she has a series that we were lucky enough to uh, meet each other. Well, not meet me, she's in South Africa and I'm here mm-hmm. in the United States, but we critiqued each other's works. And so she's read everything I've written so far and I've read everything she's written so far. And there's like two, two characters, one from mine and one from hers. I'm like, these two have got to get together. <laughs> so we're actually talking later this year, we're going to get together and write either, it's going to be longer than a short story, but probably being novella length, mm-hmm. uh, where are these two actually like get to each other's orbit. That's fun. That's really fun. I, I have never yet tried to actually co-write something like, like I have that that shared universe and I've you know written in different anthologies where there's like a shared theme or something but I've never actually tried to co-write a single piece and I don't know if I could handle it so so best of luck (laughs) well it's like I'll write you know my guy and Mm -hmm. she'll write her girl and like that's true yeah if if it's dual point of view right yeah you can just switch back and forth and the voices are different anyways so yeah then you know somebody might have to come in to like mediate (laughs) (laughs) so you you you've obviously these um angels and demons in your world um do you touch on any other types of myths do you bring in like 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 is it a free-for-all or do you sort of stick to the more um christian angels and demons aspect um, I started out with the angels and demons, uh, mostly because I haven't really read a lot. I haven't found a lot to read that is with angels. And I, I, I love angels. I love the whole topic. I love studying them. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, there's definitely like a lot more going on. I mean, we've got like in this one, there's the angels, there's the dark guardian, who mm-hmm. is not exactly a demon, but he's not exactly not a demon. <laughs> um but and we also have shadow creatures and she battles like an, all these different mythical creatures and cryptids that you know you've never really some you haven't even heard of I had to like really research to find out mm-hmm. okay what would be a really good monster to throw in here <laughs> yeah but um and the other books I can already tell you book two uh, we've expanded to like there's vampires in that one. Oh neat uh we've got uh some creatures I didn't even, I couldn't even like name. I'm like, I'm not even gonna try to put a name to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's a lot, it, it expands a lot more. I think pretty much every supernatural creature I can think of is, is going to be in there. And even in book three, um, something I'm adding uh, that I haven't added yet. I'm still looking at it, but I, I think I'm going to get into like Roman and Greek mythology to bring oh, cool. some of that out. Mm-hmm. It's always interesting to see how different authors kind of weave together a bunch of different um, myths, you know, from from, from various origins. Um, 
because in a lot of ways they're they're pretty compatible because I find a lot of cultures answered the same questions in just all these different creative ways and seeing how how people combine those is just really fun yeah I didn't really think I'd bring in like the Greek mythology Mm -hmm. part but it just it's one of those things that you're out and about and you're driving in the car and you're listening to the radio and you're like, oh, wait a minute, that would be perfect. <laughs> why didn't I think of that when I was like trying to, you know, plot out, you know, the book? Like, why didn't I go that direction? Well, now you're I am. too close. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what you, you've written a couple of other um, shorter fiction um, yes. works as well. So tell me a little bit about about those. And do you sort of have a, a theme running through them? Um, the two different short stories I've written were both part of romance anthologies, mm-hmm. and they were kind of sort of on the paranormal romance genre. Yep. Um, the first one, The Bowman's Inn, I didn't take it too far deep into paranormal romance, but there's like aspects of it mm-hmm. uh, that brings like the two people together. And it's definitely, like, I'll go ahead and put the warning out here, the two short stories or more like new adult and adult, I would not recommend that for young adult. There's a little more romance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those. Whereas right now, like Graylin and her story, it's kind of, it's t- it starts out tame and it's definitely not going to go to that extreme that the short stories did. But, mm-hmm. uh, definitely would not recommend that for the younger kids. And the <laughs> second one, actually, I really love. Um, I was just talking with the other authors from that anthology and it is we took fairy tales and we sort of put a new modern twist on it you could go any direction you wanted to it didn't have to be a certain genre Mm -hmm. but uh, I took the Robin Hood story and actually Mm -hmm. one of the characters from the series is in that story like it's her story oh cool um you see her in the first book but only in her shifter form Mm -hmm. and later on in the series you'll see her non shifter form and her human form, but she's got her own story. And um, someone was trying to talk me into doing a whole series just on her. And I, I'm going to consider that, but I got to finish this first. <laughs> right. Yeah, one thing at a time. I've, I've been trying to do the, the two series at a time thing. And like, it's nice when they're different flavors, you know, to, to jump between if, if you hit a block. But at the same time, it's like, now I have two different audiences who are expecting you know, books coming out at a certain pace and, and I've just doubled my workload. What have I done? So, um, I remember seeing, I think it was on Twitter, um, an author talking about how when they're reading and they can tell like certain characters, like, like your shifter character, um, you know, if, if they get more than like a one line description, it's like, oh, Oh, there's a spin-off novel. Oh, there's, you know, <laughs> there there's a spin-off series and just um how how fun it is to like like kind of decide which uh which characters get those as as an author. Yeah, well, I was lucky in that I was actually the short story that I did sort of fueled putting her back into the series that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Uh but like I'm definitely going like after this, after Grayland's story, I'm taking the other guardian angel in the story, Jasper, and I'm going to do his own series. Uh, but yeah, I, there's, I, I could take it in a hundred different directions with every character that comes in there. And I would just be writing forever, but there's also other stories in my head that aren't exactly the same, wouldn't blend well with it, that I want to get out eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's there's never like not enough ideas. That's that's not a problem. Yeah, that's definitely not a problem. My head's bursting. So you you mentioned that you've been sort of holding on to, to pieces of the story since um, you know several years ago. Um, what was like? Can you pinpoint the initial inspiration and where Graylin sort of came from? Oh, well, Graylin was actually unnamed until like a few years ago. Uh, but. Trying to figure out a way to put this. I'm a spiritual person and that mm-hmm. I believe the angels are with us. And I had very con- concrete ideas that didn't exactly go with everyone else's ideas about guardian angels. Like, mm-hmm. um, so it kind of brimmed from there. I'm like, I don't think a guardian angel is just like, you know, this person you can't see hovering around you, making sure you, you know, step over the crack and not fall into the manhole. 
Right. Um, I actually think guardian angels can be like real people, mm -hmm. like walking down the street. Um, I actually uh, forgot who I was talking to. But one of the uh, things that came about it was I actually had an experience where I lived in Washington, D.C. And we, a bunch of my friends, we were 20 something, came home late from the Greyhound bus from Baltimore Orioles game. And mm -hmm. the Metro is not running because it's too late. And it's like three in the morning. We're walking down probably the worst part of D.C. you could think of. And we're trying to find a taxi, trying to find something, trying to make sure we just don't get killed. Right. Um, and like just sort of out of the blue, like like this guy, we didn't even speak to him, like, like points us to go into this direction because we're arguing about what way to go. Uh, this is before we all had GPS on our phones. Looking right, of in, course. Like, oh, we go this way to get to Union Station. And like I, I consider that guy to be like, a guardian angel. He didn't really speak. He didn't give his name, mm -hmm. uh, but it saved us from going, you know, down the wrong path. Right. Um, whereas, I mean, I also think, you know, there's another story of someone actually I felt really awful about, but uh, this person was very depressed and lived out in San Francisco and they were going to, decided they were going to do it. They were going to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. And so they're walking, they're like, okay, if one person says hello, one person smiles at me on the way, I won't do this. Right. And, and it just so happened one person did, and, and this person like turns around and doesn't take their own life. Mm -hmm. so I consider that like a guardian angel. Yeah. So, but I, I, they fascinate me. And so I wanted to do this story for forever. Um, but honestly, it was probably about 10, 12 years ago, I was reading a book, um, Angelology, okay. and I forgot who it was by, Danielle Trisono, I think I totally butchered her name, but, mm -hmm. and it just, it brought it all back up, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I have this story in my own head, because uh, it was about angels, and not really guardian angels, which is what I wanted to do, but mm -hmm. it's sort of, it, revitalize the idea in my head of like okay I'm I'm gonna write this now mm -hmm. well, especially with the the popularity of like the the good omens tv series and um you know just a lot of um I, I think we've stepped away a little bit from the more like gruesome um uh, like purgatory um analogy you know, that, that a lot of books, maybe like 10, 20 years ago, that were more angels and demons on earth, you know, I think we sort of stepped away from that into this more um, creative and um, a little bit less gritty, maybe, uh, angels and demons version um, that, that I just really enjoy, because I feel like it's a little bit more playful, it's a little bit more um, fantastical in a lot of ways. It doesn't have to be all, you know, Fire and brimstone, really. Right, right, exactly. Like I've read some that really kind of glorify and put a romantic spin on like on demons, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I don't know if I can get into that. <laughs> but in essence, you know, one of my guys in my story is um, sort of maybe not actually demon, but you know, there's so there's that there's the allure, mm -hmm. and it doesn't it can be more fun. Like there's a lot of bantering. I mean, there's some fighting in the book but you know we're not going down into the depths of hell this isn't the apocalypse mm -hmm. you know, it's it's none of that um a little more lighthearted, but in going forward it's going to be a little more like oh wait a minute this could have rippling effects mm -hmm. not just here but you know heaven and hell but yeah i didn't want it to be gruesome i didn't want it to be I love Stephen King and Anne Rice, but I didn't want it to be anything like that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's sort of on on the other end. Yeah, fun to read, but yeah, not not necessarily for for everyone. That's for sure. But I also wanted it to be relatable. I didn't want the characters to be somebody you couldn't imagine like meeting. Right. The main characters are like, okay, I, that person doesn't could never actually exist because you know, no one could be that perfect and wonderful and everything's done right and 
it, it's, I wanted them to be relatable and more human. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. This is like one of my new favorite questions for people. Um, what was the most difficult part of the story? Not, not necessarily like the, the writing process, but the actual story itself for you to, to tackle. Book one has a lot of real things, real places mm-hmm. in it for me. And so I was, it was actually really hard writing those things because some of it brought up a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to give it justice to like what I saw what through my own eyes. Well, I like to take people that I know or meet, you know, just very briefly and I can sort of exaggerate or add in little things to make them an actual character in the book, but I wanted to make them authentic. And so mm-hmm. I was actually really, really hard on myself. That's probably why I had a gazillion freaking drafts of the first book. Because I was just, I, if I did, I would read it again after, you know, like a month or whatever. I'd be like, no, that's, that's not right. That's not how she talked or that's not, you know, you know, how the scene was, you know, when you're coming into the, up to the end and you see this great, beautiful, majestic manor house. And mm-hmm. like, I was, I am my own worst enemy when it comes to stuff like that. So when do we get more into like book two and three, where we're getting away from things that I'm actually familiar with and trying to add in my own experiences into it. So it seems more real, like it's actually easier to write. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the research is sort of on, on a different level at that point. I did just, um, let's see, in book three, she actually goes back to Ireland, and I had changed it recently, uh, the first part of the book, to be a different place, Mm -hmm. but the way I had written it, you know, it's fiction, I'm like, okay, there's a pier, it's at the beach, I was, like, sort of describing it more like a Coney Island type of thing, and then I saw a picture of the place, I'm like, that is nothing. (laughs) I want to describe so I actually found somebody from that area that lived there for like 20 years Mm -hmm. and I just had an interview with her like two weeks ago so I could change that scene because I'm like oh no I've got to make it more like that because if someone from that area (laughs) reads this they're going to be like that's nothing like it but you know it's still fiction I could have left it in there but I want it to be real I wanted people to be able to like walk out there oh yeah and this is where Graylin had the fight with that guy and you know well plus I mean you know as uh, as you're working on stuff if it's um on a smaller scale you could always just uh write off traveling there for <laughs> you know as as research on, on well on I'm, I'm working on that one so yeah. <laughs> I, I've been working on my husband for a few years now like I really need to go to Ireland to research this you know <laughs> Yeah, that's that, that's the nice part about about the writing process is being like, well, you know, I could I could just go. And one day, I actually just got my uh, renewed passport in the mail last week, so I'm one step closer to doing that part. Awesome. <laughs> what other projects do you have coming up? I mean, obviously, you're you're working on the the next book and and the third book as well. Um, but do you have any other anthologies coming up or um, or events? Um, I have a couple of events that I'm going to. Uh, February 29th, I'll be at Pinned Charleston oh, cool. uh, for a book signing. Mm-hmm. It's my first one. I'm really excited. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's so nerve wracking. Yeah, I just got confirmation that I was going to be there. I'm like, I'm not prepared. I don't have this. this. <laughs> so I'm a little freaking out about it. Uh, then I'm also going to be at the Queen City Book Fair, which is uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, okay. on May 23rd. Oh, nice. Um, and we're going to start adding events from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to get up to uh, Washington, D.C., since a lot of the story uh, from book one, from Rekindle Prophecy, is based like, in rural Virginia and then and in D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it'd be fun to do that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I actually just got... A message yesterday asking if I wanted to be in this anthology, a Halloween based anthology. So I'm still, consi- I'm leaning towards it, but I'm still considering it because, okay, book two's got to get out the door. And I mm-hmm. just broke out book three into two different books. But I also have like 
Jasper is in the book. I'm going to co-author a story with him and a character from my author friend from South Africa's book. Do, do you know when that's coming out? I don't know when it's coming out. We're just, we're going to start planning like late summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it probably won't take, I don't think it'll take too long. Hopefully we could get it out about the same time yeah. that two comes out. That'd be fun. Have like a little double feature, right? <laughs> yeah, I kind of like doing that. Awesome. But I also have ideas outside of like paranormal and fantasy romance. Uh, there's a military, I don't even know what to call I don't know what genre to put it in. It's like a military thriller, sort of romance type of thing. <laughs> Maybe like romantic suspense kind of thing. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know what genre to put it in. It's, mm -hmm. It could go through so many. Um, but that's been like banging in my head for probably two years. I need to get that one out. So that'll probably be my next, once I get out of this whole book, the Graylin and the guardian angels and get that all out of my system, that'll probably be my first big project. Awesome. So why don't you uh, tell our listeners where they can find you and find your work uh, now that they're like dying to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm pretty much everywhere online. Uh, I'm on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Walmart. Like online, online ordering online, you can get me pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm not actually in many bookstores right now. I'm actually talking with three different bookstores, including Barnes and Noble, to get the actual physical book on the shelves. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not done yet, but it's available for anybody to purchase online. Um, if they want to find me, I am on Facebook at Casey Freeman Author. I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. I have a <laughs> website. I've got a newsletter. I mean, the whole, the whole shebang. The whole shebang, which is, was a good reason for getting the publisher because basically beforehand I was just on Facebook and didn't know what I was doing at all and I'm still mm -hmm. not really sure I know what I'm doing but they were able to lay it out like oh you need to go get a Pinterest account and you need to do YouTube videos I'm like, YouTube <laughs> videos who wants to watch me on YouTube <laughs> see that's that's why I do this is because it's sort of the same thing but you don't have to see my face anymore so that's good yeah that would probably be preferable to me because then yeah I did the Facebook lives are what they, but when you like put it out there on YouTube, like my husband will tease me because he knows that I absolutely cannot stand the sound of my own voice, mm -hmm. like recorded. I, I, I can't, we haven't even watched our wedding video because of it. <laughs> That's but, like, that. I, I had to get over that real fast because I have to, you know, obviously edit this podcast. And so I'm just like ad nauseum listening to myself. And finally I realized like, when you break it down to sound bites, everyone's laugh sounds ridiculous. Like we all sound like utter fools. And that like, after that, I'm like, oh, okay. We all sound silly. It's good. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I need to take that as, you know, my own little mental project to get myself better prepared. Cause every time he boots up that YouTube video, just to annoy me, <laughs> I, I cringe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. Like it's like I sound okay by my own head, but when you like, uh -huh. when I listen back to me, I'm like, ooh, ugh. Yeah, yeah, without the, the resonance of your own skull around the sound, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like you anymore. It's not you. But thank you so much for, for joining me and telling me all about your series. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I, I know several readers who will be very interested, so. Oh, I hope so, and uh, I would love to hear from anybody that does read it to get their opinion. Oh, yeah. uh, if they have questions, comments, they want to get on social media and shoot me a message or something, I'll gladly answer what I can without giving away too many spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't don't be asking for spoilers for, for book two until it's out. Come on now. <laughs> no spoilers. I mean, uh, the only spoiler I'll give you is that the shifter in book one has her own story over here for a short story. So, <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks again for, for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. This has been the Amphibian Press podcast. With me today was Casey Freeman. I'm V.S. Holmes. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>